Bibles, and we'll go to 1 Samuel 7 and verse 12. 1 Samuel 7, verse 12. And when I read this verse, you'll see what the phrase was I was talking about in uh, Come Thou Fount. 1 Samuel 7, and we'll, we'll, we'll go back and, and read much more of the chapter, but this is the, um, the key verse here. And Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shin, and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. We, when we sing that song, they use this phrase, Here I raise mine Ebenezer. And uh, the, the word Ebenezer, it means stone of help. And it's, we, we have things like that in our modern society where we have monuments or a memorial, where when we go and look at it, it reminds us of something. Strangely enough, in modern society, sometimes it'll remind us of a defeat. <laughs> Not a very good memory. Now, this is a, a memorial of, of a victory and of standing with, with the Lord. Uh, just rehearse the story behind it briefly. Uh, the, the priest, Eli, had, had died, and his, his sons were killed in, in a battle, and the ark was taken. I don't know if you remember the story, they thought, well, if we take the ark into battle, you know, God surely will bless us and we'll win. Well, they didn't win. And uh, the Philistines took the ark of the covenant home with them. And man, did they have trouble. <laughs> because uh, finally they sent it back. And uh, it was in Abinadab's house for uh, 20 years. Verse 2 tells us that. Uh, that the time was long. It was 20 years. And all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Now, uh, it's recorded in 2 Samuel 6 when David goes and gets it and, and brings it back in the, the story there. But let's, let's read in verse 3 because uh, there's, a, there's a revival here. It says in verse 3, And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth and serve the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. Basically, they had a revival. You know, they... Uh, they just confessed to God that they, they'd been sinning. They put away the idols. The interesting uh, picture there, they, they drew water and poured it out under the Lord. Yeah, just a picture of, of their relationship to the Lord. God was worth more than anything. But because of this revival, evidently the Philistines were... Oh, I don't know, not necessarily in control of them, but they were, they were at odds. And uh, as they gathered together, look at verse 7. When the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. The Philistines thought, oh, they're gathering for war. <laughs> they're having a revival. And so they get, they get together and they're going to attack them. Uh, verse 8, they had exactly the right response. The children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering, holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. Uh, so they, they went to God in prayer. You know, it's, it's interesting. Sometimes, when you, sometimes you do the right thing and you have a bad result, <laughs> in a sense. You know, They're having a revival and, and they get attacked for it. Well, their answer was to go to the Lord. And in verse 10 and 11, they have the victory. As Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. The men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came unto Bethkar. And that's when we, we come to the verse that we started with. Uh, Israel had a victory, and 
they, they put up this stone um, and they, they name it Ebenezer. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us, the stone of help. Now they set up a, a memorial and they're particularly remembering that God had helped them. This wasn't a, a memorial to them or to their strength or their greatness. I, I don't know if you've noticed lately, but um, in sports nowadays, people are constantly praising themselves. <laughs> I, I can hardly stand to watch professional sports anymore. Anybody does anything, you know, boy, they're, you know, they're just jumping up and down about how great they are. Uh, well, that wasn't what Israel was doing. They knew God had won the victory. And when they set up that Ebenezer, it was to remind them in days to come that God had blessed them. God had helped them. A stone to mark where God defeated the Philistines. I'm told that physically it was within view of Jerusalem. Now, there's some things we can, we can learn from this. Uh, they remembered how the Lord helped them. And, you know, as Christians, we need to remember how the Lord's helped us. You need to remember how the Lord has helped you. Uh, listen, the, the natural response in life for, for most people is to think about the failures and think about the defeats. I, I don't know how it is with you, but sometimes just in my mind, something will pop up I haven't thought of for 20 years. 30 years, some stupid thing I did or whatever. And, uh, you know, it's real easy to think about that. But that's not what we need to be thinking about. If we're going to look back at all, we need to remember what God has done for us, the victories that, that God has, has won. But let me show you some examples here. Uh, in in uh, 1 Samuel 17, David did this. Uh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 34. He, this is when he's facing Goliath. David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. When he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Now look at verse 37. David said, Moreover, The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. See, David knew, I trusted the Lord before, I can trust the Lord now. That's what we're talking about when we talk about, here I raise mine Ebenezer. <laughs> we're thinking about what God has done for us. Uh, Joshua did that in uh, Joshua chapter 4. I won't necessarily read the story, but when, when they crossed the Jordan, you know, God opened the Jordan for them. They went across on dry ground. Joshua had 12, a man from each tribe. It's Joshua 4, verses 4 through 9. Uh, take a stone and make a memorial. And he says in verse 6, that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what mean ye by these stones? So they must have put them in such a way that they figured later on people would be able to see them. I, I used to kind of picture them as underwater, <laughs> yeah, going down to their binoculars or whatever. Uh, then you shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off, and, and he's, they're just going to tell them the story of what God did. It's, a, uh, it's an Ebenezer, you know, it, it's a stone of, of, of remembering. In um, Joshua 24, at the end of Joshua's life, and verse... Uh, 27 is, is where he actually has the stone uh, put out. I think it, or no, it's verse 26. In the middle of, middle of verse 26, he took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the, the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us. For it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. It shall be there for a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. <laughs> this stone is listening. <laughs> now, this is a memorial. And what they, were, what they were talking about is, this is the chapter where he says, you need to make a choice. You're going to follow God or not? And he said, this stone is for us to remember. We chose God. God is, has, has the victory here. Um, in, the, in the Psalms, Psalm 126, he says, the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. You know, they, they often would remember the things that God had done, the victories they, they, that, 
that God had won. Uh, where we started there in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 7, verse 12, he used the word hitherto. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. And that, that word just means up to this present time. <laughs> yeah, God's been helping us. And uh, this Ebenezer is just to help us remember God will continue to help us. In, in a very practical way this evening, I just want you to think about this. And uh, I mean, you can have some physical things. You can have writings. You can have memories. Uh, but we just need to know and believe what God has done for us. Yeah, if you live more than five minutes, you're going to face some challenges and probably going to face some, some deceits, de defeats as well. But uh, you know, we, can, we can have memorials. We can have memories that will help us. There's an interesting one where Jesus, you remember when the, the lady uh, anointed Jesus in uh, Matthew 26? And he said, wherever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. That's a little different than exactly what we're talking about. But you know, there's just things that, where, where God has done something that uh, he wants us to remember. Uh, you're probably one of the, the first things that we would remember as Christians is our salvation. You know, we need to remember how, how God saved us. Uh, I can't remember how they wanted us to do it, but I remember at, at camp or something, they, they talked about putting the date of your salvation on a, on a stick and driving it into the ground somewhere around your house or something. So you'd, you'd have a memorial, you know. Now you don't necessarily have to do that, but you, know, it's, you might write it in your Bible or you'd have it in your memory, hopefully. You know, there's a lot of things in life that we memorialize. Uh, our, our marriage, birth, graduations, you know, there's things we remember every, every year or something. Well, as Christians, uh, we need to remember the, the victories that God has done in our lives. Answered prayers. You know, it's, it's good when, when something particular happens. You know, write it in your Bible. Such and such a date, God did this for me. Um, write choices that, that you made. You know, sometimes you, you won't know until you look back and you think, oh, I'm glad I made that choice. You know, God helped me there. Um, special times with God. You know, remember those victories. Remember those mountaintop experiences. You know, we, sometimes we kind of poo-hoo mountaintop experiences, but uh, listen, uh, they're good to have. <laughs> it's good to have a victory every once in a while. Good to have something where you feel like God's really done something uh, in your life and, and maybe even through your life. And, and the, the Ebenezer, you, know, you may not get a big rock and put it in your yard. <laughs> you can if you want. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you what I use a lot is a calendar. And I keep my old calendars. And, you know, it, I don't very often do it, but every once in a while I'll look back through it and think, oh, yeah, I'm, that, that was good when that happened, you know. Be careful with your calendar because you'll read some things. You'll think, ooh, that's a pity that happened. But uh, uh, writing in your Bible, uh, in your calendar. Some people keep a journal or a diary. Um, photos, you know, make a collage of something. That's, that's good. And sometimes it can be an item, you know, a physical thing. Uh, I have a file. It's labeled Good Letters. <laughs> it's not real thick. But, uh, uh, you know, it's good every once in a while I look back where somebody's written and said, here's what God's done in my life through your ministry. And uh, just, to, just to have an, an Ebenezer. Some of the messages I've been bringing lately, uh, I, I brought about 10 years ago. And, and so on the back of them are oftentimes, I type them up new, but on, on the old ones um, are oftentimes a prayer list. And, you know, going through an old prayer list can be real interesting. Hey, I looked at one the other day. It was when our kids were little and, uh, you know, seeing what you were praying about and, and how God had, had answered prayers. But I, I think we need to physically think about this, not forgetting the lessons of the past, especially the victories. Uh, leaving a marker, having an Ebenezer uh, to remind us, if nothing else, writing it down. Now, having said that, there are some dangers in looking back. One is remembering the failures. Uh, sometimes, you know, if, if we don't learn from our failures, then, you, you know, we're condemned to, to repeat them. But uh, we don't want to spend a, a lot of time thinking about past failures. The other danger, another danger is glorifying self. You look back and you think, yeah, boy, I was, you know, like these sportsmen. You know, they're always beating themselves on the chest. <laughs> Number one. Uh, uh, glorifying self can, can be a problem. Ebenezer's are when God helped you. 
and we need to make sure that we're, we're doing that. A, a third one is glorifying the past. Now, of course, none of us would ever do that, but uh, you know, I've met people where, man, the past is just, it, it's like a fairy tale. <laughs> you know, they've taken out all the bad bits and everything is just great, you know. Uh, be careful. You don't need to glorify the past. The fourth problem is glorifying the stone. Um, you know, you set up an Ebenezer and pretty soon you're worshiping the Ebenezer, you know. Some people do that with the cross. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a, a physical cross, you know, in, in various, various forms. But its value is not in the object. It's in reminding you of Jesus. The cross is empty. And, you know, what he did, what he did for us. And there's a, an example of this. Probably most of you are aware of it. Numbers chapter 21. You remember as, as Israel was in the wilderness there, um, they began to murmur, and God sent the, they always, we always call them fiery serpents, and uh, they began to bite the people. They began to die, and, and God told Moses in Numbers 21, verse 6, uh, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We've sinned, for we've spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. It was just a miraculous thing that, that God did. We, we sing a song from there, Look and live, my brother live. Um, well, the, the problem was that over the years then, Israel began, well, it says in uh, 2 Kings chapter 18, they began to offer incense to the brass serpent. Now, this is 700 years later when we, we see this, more or less. Uh, 2 Kings 18, verse 4. It's talking about King Hosea. He removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For under those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. <laughs> now that word, according to my notes on the side here, means a piece of brass. It's just a piece of brass. You know, there's no um, value to it other than what it represented that God did, that God did through, Mo through Moses and through that brass serpent. Um, you know, the problem sometimes is we set up an Ebenezer and then we lose track and, and we start uh, worshiping the, the memory, uh, the Ebenezer, the, uh, the item, uh, rather than remembering the Lord. A lot of things can become like that. You know, our church life, our, our reading our Bible, uh, uh, we, can, we can get it out of, out of what it is intended. Be careful uh, what memories you dwell on. To turn to Psalm 77, Psalm 77 and verse 11. Several psalms, they deal with thinking, how they're thinking, what they're remembering. You can read the first part of the psalm yourself. Um, but psalm 77, starting in verse 11. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will, re will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. And they're just remembering. You're the God who's, who's great. You're the God who set us free. Uh, we need to be careful uh, what memories we dwell on. Don't, don't get down in the slew of despair. You know? uh, remember the, the Lord. Hebrews says, that The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what men shall do unto me. And we need to be be glorifying the Lord. Uh, we have God's promise in Philippians. He says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And we have God's promise. God is going to keep, keep doing good things. Uh, I remember hearing Jack Hiles preach. I think it was from Psalm 44. If you, if you don't know who that is, that's okay. But he's a real fiery preacher. And, 
Uh, he, was, he was preaching this, this verse, We've heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us. And it, his sermon was, you know, our dads are talking about it. Now it's time for us to experience it. <laughs> you know, uh, it's good to have a memory. And it's good to, to glorify the Lord. And, and it's good to know what God has done in the past. But the reason we need to know that is so that God can bless us today. So that we can be what we need to be for God uh, today. We've heard it. God, do it again through me. <laughs> you know, you, you did it through David and you did it through uh, Moses and, and that. Lord, use us. Here I raise mine Ebenezer. You know, there's, uh, there's victories that we can look at in, in our past, in your past as a Christian. If you're saved, there's at least that one. And there's got to be some others. And as they come along, listen, don't discount them. Don't devalue them. God is doing something. God is at work in our lives. And what a, what a blessing it is. You know, the, the people we used to be, uh, we're not those people anymore. God is making us like Jesus. And I just wanted to encourage you this evening with this thought of this Ebenezer. Uh, if nothing else, keep it in your memory bank. But a good thing to write it down. A good thing even sometimes just to have something that reminds you, yeah, God had the victory there. And uh, what a blessing that'll be. Any comments or, or questions before we take some prayer requests tonight? Now you know what an Ebenezer is.